This section that we're doing is going to be a combination of 4.2 and 4.4 out of our book. Again, don't pay attention to this. 4.2, 4.4. Okay, and what we're going to be doing is we're going to actually start getting into the trigonometry, into the meat of what I think is the most important thing for us to know. This, the first uh, several sections that we do uh, moving forward, these are really, really important. It's really uh, what you will take with you out of the, tr uh, out of the trig portion of pre-calculus. And the objective is to be able to find the sine and cosine of any point on a coordinate plane. So that we're going to be getting into sine and cosine. And then we're also going to be getting into uh, tangent as well. And one thing we want to remember and we're going to remind ourselves is of SOHCAHTOA because this is something that we will be using forever in trigonometry and understanding the concepts of SOHCAHTOA. Okay, so let's get into uh, specifically what we want to cover out of uh, the sine, cosine, and tangent. So again, I know it's hard to read, but you can read it on your paper fairly easily. So what we're going to talk about is everything that we usually do with trig deals with a circle. And uh, what we're talking about is any point that we have on a coordinate plane can be made into a circle in some way, shape, or form. So what we're talking about here is like if I pick a point that is, say, in this quadrant, what I can do is I know that this point represents a positive x and a positive y. And what I can do is I can create a right triangle out of this point on this circle. No, that's not the best, that's not the best picture in the world, but you get, kind of get the idea where the bottom line right there will be the x, the vertical line there will be the y of the coordinate, and then we're going to call this hypotenuse portion, we're going to call that r. Because that's going to be the radius of the circle. And we can do this around the entire circle. If I pick a point in the second quadrant, I can do the same thing. I can make a triangle. The only difference here is that the coordinate, instead of it being positive x and positive y, now we're going to be negative x and positive y where the negative x is on the x-axis, the positive y is on the vertical, and then our radius is still going to be the hypotenuse. And then we can go through and do the third quadrant. Draw that. It's still a right triangle. We still have our negative x as the x value, but now it's going to be negative x and negative y. So we have negative y down here, and we have our r, for our radius. And then the last quadrant, we're going to do the same thing, except now we have a positive x and a negative y, and we still have our r. And we'll put the negative y right there. So the idea of this is understanding that no matter what quadrant you're in, we know for a fact that our x value and our y values are either going to be positive or negative, depending on which quadrant we're in. Now, what we could do is, this is really small, but I can't really, I'm not going to write it in here too much, but I'm going to make sure that we understand that might be tough to see, but theta is going to be all four of these angles. So that's what we're going to use to represent theta is all four of those angles. So the idea of this is we can come up with these new uh, formulas essentially to find our sine and our cosine. So if you notice, we have opposite over hypotenuse is our sine function. So no matter what you look at here, our opposite side is always going to be our y, and our hypotenuse is always going to be our r. So we're going to say y over r is going to be our sign. So the y value divided by the radius would always be the value of our sine of theta. For cosine, it's going to be x divided by r, because that's the adjacent side for all of these. And again, the hypotenuse is still r. And then the tangent is going to be y divided divided by x, opposite over adjacent. We won't worry about the negatives because that will work itself out. If the value is negative, it will work itself out. Now, one thing that I want to do is I want to introduce the three other trig functions, the new trig functions that we have that are basically uh, they're related to sine, cosine, and tangent. So I want you to write this down for sure in your notes. The first one is the cosecant. We write this out as C, S, C, and then of theta, and the cosecant is the reciprocal of sine. 
So cosecant is reciprocal of sine, and that is equal to R over Y. And you could also say that it's equal to the hypotenuse over the opposite. The next one we call secant. Secant is written out S-E-C, and that will be R over X. And again, that is the reciprocal of our cosine, which would then be hypotenuse over adjacent. And then the last one is cotangent. So just co and then tangent. And that will be cot theta. And that will be x over y, which is the same thing as adjacent over opposite. And that is the reciprocal of tangent. So we will be using these. It's important for you to know them and start to get familiarize yourself with, with what the, is paired with sine. So sine is paired with cosecant, cosine is paired with secant, and tangent is paired with cotangent. So in this first example, we are being asked to find the sine, cosine, and tangent of the point negative 3, 2. So the idea of this is, is where is negative 3, 2? That's our first uh, objective here is to is to actually label where negative 3, 2 is. So we go negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, go up to, here's our point, negative 3, 2. And like I said before, we could technically draw a circle. It won't be very good, but we could draw a circle that actually goes through this point. So we have this point here. And, but what we're really going to do is we're going to draw a triangle because that's what's going to help us figure out what the sine, cosine, and tangent of this is. So when we draw this triangle, we already know that our x value is negative 3. We already know that our y value is 2. The only thing we don't know is what the radius is. So we can use the Pythagorean theorem, because this is a right triangle, to figure out what that radius is. So we will say r squared equals 2 squared plus negative 3 squared. So r squared equals 4 plus 9. So r squared equals 13, which we take the square root of both sides, and we get r is equal to the square root of 13. So that is what we'll go right here is the square root of 13. So now what we can do is we can label out what every single one of our trig functions are. Because we know opposite over hypotenuse, but we also now have new formulas. If we go back, you can see that with our new formulas, we have another way to write them. Now, I don't really care if you remember these. If you always want to remind, remember it as opposite over hypotenuse, that's fine, or adjacent over hypotenuse. That's the way that I do it. But now you have another way, y over r. So our y value over r will always be our sine value. So when we do that, it looks like this. Sine of theta, because again, this, this angle will be theta. So sine of theta is going to be equal to our y value or our opposite over our hypotenuse. So 2 over square root of 13. Now, one thing that you may not be familiar with, but you need to be, is we need to rationalize the denominator. We can never have a square root in the denominator. So to do that, we just simply multiply by whatever the square root is over itself, because the square root of 13 times the square root of 13 is just 13. The square roots cancel out. And then we're left with 2 root 13 on the top. So there's our sine value. Now we go to the cosine. Cosine of theta is going to be adjacent or x value over hypotenuse. So negative 3 over the square root of 13. And again, rationalize the denominator. Fairly easy. And we're left with negative 3. root 13 over 13. And then the last thing we do is the tangent of theta. And the tangent of theta is opposite over adjacent. So we have 2 over negative 3, which is just equal to negative 2 thirds. So those are the three values that we get. Okay? 
So moving on to the next example, very similar example, but we're going to be in a different quadrant. So this is going to be at 4, 2. So 1, 2, 3, 4. And then we're going to be down in this quadrant. So 4, negative 2. And again, you could draw a circle. I know it's not going to be good, but you get the idea. So we have our circle. There's our radius of our circle. And there's our triangle. So our 4 is going to be the x value. Negative 2 is going to be the y value. We need to figure out our hypotenuse. So we do r squared equals 4 squared plus negative 2 squared. r squared equals 16 plus 4 equals 20. So r, r is going to be equal to the square root of 20. Once again, something that you should have learned in geometry for sure is reducing square roots. So the square root of 20 is equal to the square root of 4 times the square root of 5. We break this up into perfect squares. So the square root of 4 is 2 root 5. So r is going to be equal to 2 times the square root of 5. So now we can do the same thing we did before. Sine of theta will be equal to opposite over hypotenuse, so negative 2 over 2 root 5. The 2's cancel out, so we're uh, uh, left with negative 1 over root 5. Rationalize the denominator. And we, are in, and we end up with square root of 5 over 5. Now we do the cosine of theta. Cosine of theta is going to be 4 over 2 root 5, which is equal to 4 divided by 2 is just 2. So 2 over root 5, rationalize the denominator, and we're left with 2 root 5 over 5. So there's our sine, there's our cosine, and then we can do our tangent, which is opposite over adjacent, or uh, y over x, and that's negative 2 over 4, which reduces to negative 1 half. Okay, so that's that. So those are that's basically being able to find the sine and cosine and even tangent at any point. Here. Okay, so moving on to another example. This is another type of example that you're going to get. And what it's, what's going to happen here is they're going to tell you what quadrant you're in, and then they're going to give you the value. So they're saying sine of theta is equal to negative 5 over 13. So because of this, we and they tell us what quadrant we're, we're in, we know that we're in this quadrant, so we just immediately draw our triangle in this quadrant. And because they've given us values, sine is opposite over hypotenuse, therefore 5 has to be opposite of theta, so the 5 is going to be here, which is negative, and then the hypotenuse is going to be 13. So again, what you'll do is they want us to find cosine. Well, we know that we're going to need this value right here for cosine. So now that we have two sides of our triangle, we can use the Pythagorean theorem again to figure out what that third side is going to be. So we have 169 equals 25 plus x squared. And we keep going. We have 144 equals x squared. Therefore, x has to equal 12. So therefore, this is 12. So the cosine of theta here is adjacent over hypotenuse. So the cosine of theta equals 12 over 13. Okay, that should be pretty simple. They give you two of the sides based on this. They tell you what quadrant you're in so you can label properly with the, with the uh, correct signs on everything. Okay, and then we can answer our question from there. Now, down here, we just pretty much want to talk about sine. So sine is going to be equal to all of our y values. Cosine is going to be equal to our x values. And if you notice, all y values are positive above and negative below. And all cosine values are negative to the left and positive to the right. So sine will always be positive up here and always negative down here. And cosine will be always negative on the left and always positive on the right. Okay, so we will go over one other thing in class. It's going to be one more uh, quadrant when we get to class and the rest of the notes we have an example that we're going to do in class as well. So 
I will see you then. Hopefully this was good.